the way to differentiate yourself in the market uh, for a, for a candidate is to uh, have those extra feathers on the cap. So what, according to you, are the most important skills for data analyst since you work as a data analyst? Yeah, I think uh, it's twofold. Um, one, I would say is uh, most of the people don't validate the data that they are providing to people. Uh, that's the most underrated skill. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as we get the data, we do the analysis and everything, and then we just give it. Uh, to our managers or leaders, uh, then they come to us and they're like, hey, this number doesn't make sense. Uh, are, are you sure this is the right way? And then mm -hmm. we go back, we do something else like, oh, so sorry, we, I found something else. So make sure, you know, you validate the data before you give it to anybody because uh, when the stakes are high, uh, you know, blame game won't work. Mm -hmm. You have to mm -hmm. make sure that you're, uh, yeah. Um, that's the underrated one. The second one is people think that, uh, you know, Excel is something that they'll never work in. And mm -hmm. uh, data analyst is all about Python, SQL and everything. Um, <laughs> as soon as you go there, as soon as you start working in, an, in, a, in, a, in a company, I think the first one year, like this is like a average data analyst that I'm talking about. Uh, they always most of the time they do most of their analysis in excel and then they start shifting towards automations and everything so make sure that you learn excel it it's not uh, bad that you learn that it's mm -hmm. it's good yeah uh, okay uh, what does day to day look like for a data analyst like how does that day go from morning till evening so right now i'm a business intelligence engineer right so role has changed a bit in amazon but when I was there in Dow Jones for two years, most of my work was finding the data, trying to understand that, trying to uh, get that perfect data for your analysis. And, and then, um, you know, data cleaning, data uh, munging is what, you know, folks call these days, data cleaning, all these, all these things take around, you know, 80 to 90% of your time. Yeah. If you really have to walk me through, because I think all these are most likely concepts, uh, but if you have to walk me through your day, uh, what what would it be like if you, let's say you started at eight, eight o'clock, what does your day look like? In some companies, we have uh, daily standups, right? Mm -hmm. um, just going through what your day looks like. So it would be like, hey, you have to, th these are the open tickets. Um mm -hmm. And these are the requests from people. We have these issues. So going through those issues, um, stakeholder management is part of that. Stakeholders yeah. come to us and like, hey, this is uh, this is something we need by today evening. Uh, so that <laughs> we have to discuss with our manager, setting right. expectations, priorities. Yeah. Uh, so that as soon as we're, we're done with that, we go to our own, uh, you know, zone right. of doing the tickets going through that tickets uh doing the analysis and then uh okay. data and cleaning what, and all what that does stuff. those ticket include like what kind of work does that include um so let's say a stakeholder uh, <clears throat> back in Dazos, this this happened a stakeholder comes to say hey we have this new uh, feature on our wall street journal article can you please um, get insights on that and add it to the dashboard so what we do is we extract the data, mm -hmm. making sure that the data extraction is important. Extract the data using SQL, do the analysis in Python, making sure we validate the data. And then as soon as we do all those things, we add it to the dashboard, test it with our own team mm -hmm. before giving it to the stakeholders, because you have to make sure uh, that you test it with our teammates. If that goes good, we show them the demo. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, uh, these these are the new features that I've added. Uh, do you like it or not? And uh, writing a documentation about it. That's mm -hmm. the key part, writing documentation because they won't know the technical features. So we have to list it down um, in, a, in, in the form of a Word doc maybe so that they can go through that, 
maybe some other guy would come would replace them uh so making sure that documentation is there is important yeah okay got it uh what what were some of the myths according to you like you heard that this is what data analyst does or this is what data analyst is about but then when you started actually working as one what did you find out that oh this is not what uh, people were saying <laughs> i think the biggest myth is um that you you get to work with all the fancy uh stuff uh python sql and mm. you you get to work with all the clean data um real world data in a company is messed up mm. you have to figure out ways to clean it on your own and that's where domain knowledge is super important uh, you know we can talk about all sorts of uh, analysis in our clean world data in in our colleges um, but when we go to a company there are like i would say i i even saw like 97 or like even 150 columns in a table so that cleaning part that which which is useful all that menial task we never talk about it all the fancy stuff sql python is there so mm-hmm. that's yeah that's 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 where our data analyst uh, comes into picture got it okay so um according to you can someone who doesn't have work experience as a data analyst can become a data analyst or can get a job definitely definitely no doubt about it data analyst uh, is <clears throat> seen as a starting career for a lot of uh, fresh graduates so data analyst is seen as that um, step towards that and i'm probably in that transition mm-hmm. so that's yeah okay uh, what are some of the most common interview questions for data analyst like you probably have given multiple interviews so what are some of the most common they usually ask for data analyst uh i think most of them are in terms of uh, sql um uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so basic and advanced sql questions um and then some of the technical questions include uh if we have this scenario if we have x and y which one would would you choose um and why uh, ju- just just for example uh, i had taken this test um we have this marketing website we have all the data uh, i was uh, given this test and yeah. we, uh, i was say hey marketing um has finance section and sports section yeah so in this time frame which one would you uh, promote uh and why oh, can you show right. it with data so going oh, through that data yeah. uh finance section has its own metrics uh creating a metric to show you know what is important so these kind of uh, data analysis again the fancy stuff that i talked mm-hmm. about uh this is what uh, interviews are focused on these are all technical parts but then also and i then feel like to- they probably leave out some of the details so that you ask those details because they don't necessarily want the right answer they really want to see how you are trying to solve that problem definitely thought process right thought process is um something we always like i always focus on hmm. um and they they want to know how you are approaching the problem so iterating it in an interview yeah so these are these are like the, like the technical and uh, you know business based business use case questions hmm. what are and, what uh, is Oh sorry go ahead sorry last part uh, the behavioral part is very important yeah uh, so most of the data analysts are uh, part of the you know stakeholder management team type of uh, you know uh, jobs so i think um people are asked okay uh, if you have this scenario if mm-hmm. the stakeholder is asking for uh, any yeah. question what uh, any data what would you do Uh, answering that um or if they come up with uh, a scenario of i want the i i want the data tomorrow or i want the analysis tomorrow what would you do mm-hmm. so kind of uh how would you handle questions. that situations yeah yeah handle that situation yes right okay um one more question on the skills part so if you have if you have to uh someone who's not really into programming do they have to be hardcore programmer to become a data analyst or do you, they they can get away without knowing like hardcore programming like machine learning ai and all of that or is it just more scripting sql communication skills 
Yeah, so as I said before, data scientist is all about uh, hardcore uh, programming, mm -hmm. you know, um, <clears throat> machine learning and creating different models to evaluate business. A data analyst is uh, the starting step. So data analyst doesn't require all these things. Data analyst is all about uh, creating that baseline foundation for the analytics of that business. Um, he or she won't, you know, create a, a model, machine learning uh, model, which yeah. is, yeah, which is going to get deployed on the website or deployed yeah. somewhere, yeah. but they're going to create that basic foundation for the, uh, for, for the, for, for the leaders mm -hmm. to get some insights and mm -hmm. all those things. So right. programming is not a hard skill that they should focus on, but if they have it, that's a, a positive yeah. point, yeah. but it's not, it's not a pre prerequisite. Okay. Uh, what are the, what, what is the salary range for data analyst? Um, it depends on company to company, but, uh, mostly, uh, and I, I think the play, uh, the city as well. So New York city, I can, I can say, um, I was offered in the range of uh, 70 to $90,000 for a data analyst. For well, New York city. Um, wow. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that it's less, uh, because I've, I've usually it is heard. Less. Yeah. No, because data analyst is not a high skilled job. Okay. Uh, if you, if you have good skills, that's where you negotiate 70 to 90. Mm. Uh, but, uh, but an average goes to 70, 80, 75, 85. Mm. And that is again, because of uh, the experience, because of the uh, fresher entry level, mindset, yeah. Or entry yeah. level. As, yeah. yeah. If you go above, it's definitely hundred K. Yeah. Uh, but I don't see more than hundred K for average. I'm saying average, uh, for New York city, for a data mm -hmm. analyst. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what, according to you is the future of data analysis? Is this field going to stay, uh, or do you think this is going to be absorbed by AI and you know, it's going to go away? I, <laughs> yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think, um, uh, I, I read a lot of articles and I watch videos about uh, machine learning, data science. AI is still not here. Um, yeah. People people have not even started uh, working on AI. Um, in terms of data analysis, um, my take would be um, to, you know, basically up your skills um, because basic skills is what people had since last 20, 25 years that data analysis has been happening since 15, 20 years. The way to differentiate yourself in the market uh, for, a, for a candidate is to uh, have those extra feathers on the cap. Uh, so data analysis will remain the same. It is the foundation for every business. But if you want to uh, you know, have a good career, you should uh, have that extra skills, skill sets, you know, the programming skill set. Basic so that you are seen as a person who is efficient solving uh, mindset is what people go for. Mm -hmm. I'm taking 10 minutes, uh, I'm taking 10 days on Excel. And if you can do that in two minutes, you are a better candidate. For yeah, them. more efficient, uh, yeah. So yeah. that's where the data analysis is shifting, automation, mm -hmm. uh, bringing efficient solutions. Yeah. Yeah. What is your advice for someone who wants to become a data analyst or who are right now studying and want to get into data analyst? I would say um, start focusing on solving problems as much as possible, because that's what you do in a company. Uh, when you come here, you don't get a clear mindset. Uh, you, you don't get a clear data to work with. So that's where business mindset comes in. So more you solve problems at your uh, you know, college days, or maybe after your college, a graduation is done, you have that three months period to mm -hmm. period, focus on solving problems. Um, and uh, go to these hackathons and everything. Those are real world problems, what companies face. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as soon as you get acquainted with all those problems, you uh, kind of have that mindset of, oh, this is the solution that I can get. Or maybe these are the methods that I can solve. And that also changes your interview talking skills, you know, mm -hmm. because you have solved that kind of problems. You're saying, Hey, uh, this is a different uh, approach that I want to take because you have experience. That is the experience you're gaining if you don't have experience. Mm -hmm.
but uh, thank you cool. thank you so much for doing i can't wait to do this in detail with you definitely i'm more than excited for that even <laughs> even i'm i'm like super excited when i when i move to seattle i'll yeah. have a good setup like yours and yeah. definitely you will be uh, one of my guests yeah. oh thank you thank you i'm excited Thank you.